My tripod had let me down greatly. I don't know how many of you were familiar with um, the Nazi who was a survivor who was put to death simply for what he wrote in the newspaper, the Spiegel, which promoted many of the Nazi ideals, which led to the death of many people. And he's one of the Nazis who, and there's not much sympathy for them, but he is one of the Nazis that many people have looked back and been like, no, 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 wait a minute. This was the good guys, us, showing, using a disaster to show where things could possibly go in the future. By that I mean most people didn't care what happened to Goering or Goebbels or, you know, uh, von Ribbentrop or some of the distasteful people, but they just tossed the journalist in with it. And, you know, he was a hateful, terrible bigot all the way to the end. But it was almost like the government was saying, yeah, and we're going to do this later, by the way, maybe via the McCarthy era. Not that McCarthy was wrong, he was actually right. But the idea of silencing people is entirely different. It was a hint of what was to come. This kind of thing here is going to lead to the death of people, not from a mass genocide, as it were, but from misinformation and falsehoods. Listen to this. Again, what a, what a load of tripe. Fukushima's nuclear meltdown hasn't been the environmental calamity we feared. If you mean that... <clears throat> So far, the buildings haven't fallen down, thus creating uh, what could be an extinction event, or at least you know making the northern hemisphere uninhabitable. Okay, in that regard, then no, definitely there has not been a worse. That's a worst case scenario, though. That's not to say that's what we fear. That's what we said was the worst case scenario. What we feared was a massive die-off in the Pacific Ocean with, you know, Dana found on his skidoo for crying out loud to be true. Uh, we feared things like not being able to pull one, not one, zero, a zero, golden goose egg, not one tuna out of the Pacific Ocean, which didn't show shine, signs of Fukushima radiation, which they can tell by the... Uh, degradation and the half-life of the nuclear element. Uh, for those of you in uh, California, that means deduction. Um, so what am I getting at here? There's a plate of lies coming up here, not just for the Olympics, in part for that, because there's a lot of money there, and we know that this whole thing revolves more about money than safety of anyone, of course. But it's bigger than that. This is about continuing to sell whatever narrative is it is that they want to the people and force it down their throats. I mean, you see it with the vaccines. If you want to get a vaccine, go ahead. But don't do it before you look up what SM-102 is. You don't, look up, don't do it before you look up what a lipid is. And if you think I'm crazy, then go ahead and look up what a lipid is and then decide if you want to put it in your body. If you do, then go ahead. I don't think anybody should have to. I'm not. If you want to do that, go ahead. But it's about pushing lies when the truth is right in front of you. Fukushima's nuclear meltdown hasn't been the environmental calamity we feared. Not one tuna has come out of the Pacific Ocean which isn't radiated from Fukushima. That is pretty much the freaking calamity that we feared. If, if you'd like to know, yeah, that's that's... That's pretty much it, as a matter of fact. So, the headline itself is a lie. And it says, <clears throat> As the accident unfolded, the stricken power plant released massive amounts of cesium-137 into the surrounding environment. 80% of the material running into the Pacific Ocean. Do you know what? That was the environmental catastrophe that we feared, dumbass. 
I used to have a major temper problem. I really don't anymore, and nobody would believe that, but I really don't. This kind of thing still just gets me because I'm able to look at the bigger picture. Okay. Conspiracy theorists will say that they know exactly why something is happening, for instance. Now, this is important. Stay with me. Stay, please stay with me. Conspiracy theorists will say that the Georgia Guidestones is proof that COVID-19 was created to kill all of us. I don't know that to be true. Those of us who simply speak facts and who get accused of being a conspiracy theory are drastically different. Well, how so? I say this. I don't know if COVID-19 was released on purpose. I do think it came from a lab. However, I also don't know if it was done on purpose from a lab. Perhaps. Signs seem to be increasingly pointing in that direction, but we don't know it. So what else do we have? <clears throat> well, we know for sure that from all of this, whether it's done on purpose or not, the Georgia Guidestones want to kill a vast, I forget what the number is, uh, the Georgia Guidestones want to kill but, um, upwards than I think, 90% of the people on the earth. I should have brought the Google Assistant up here. So what you're looking at then is, let's say that everything has unfolded exactly the way that the government has said that it has. But it escaped on accident, or it was worsened through the uh, eating of uh, bush meat, which we know from AIDS research that it's not caused from that. That's another conspiracy theory. But you can, you, in some instances, it can be uh, transmissible that way. Some viruses can be. So that's not outrageous. Done on purpose? Was, was Fukushima done on purpose? I don't know. I'm not a conspiracy theorist. But here's what I know. I know that in Alberta County, Georgia, as it says right here, one of the goals of the Georgia Guidestones, which was erected in 1980, says that they want to keep maintain humanity under 500 million people. 500 million people. Could that be why China was the most populated country in the world and they went on this massive killing spree uh, the last decades where they limited how many children you could have? So I ask those kind of questions. And then I bring it back to the way I opened the show. This is going to cost lives. This kind of tripe here looks to me like they're doing everything that they can do to try to reach 500 million people. It looks that way. I can't prove it is. I don't have any conspiracy theories to give you. I know people love to call me a conspiracy theorist, but it's really not true. But I know that the Guidestones are there. It's not a theory. They're standing there. So you decide. Look, Listen to some of this. It says, um, this really angered me. Disposing of the treated water is an unavoidable issue in decommissioning of the Fukushima plant. Well, wouldn't that be a significant item that we would have also been worried about on day one? That maybe 10 years later, we'll still be trying to figure out what to do with water that is deadly. And the article, it goes on and on and on and says that, that we didn't see the kinds of cancers that we thought we would. We've got abnormal thyroids going through the roof. And as I said in other shows, uh, scientists uh, that are tied to the nuclear industry, usually in some way, are saying these outrageous things such as, well, it's because we're doing more testing. Oh, so thyroid cancer is very common in children. Pre-thyroid issues are common in children, and we'd see them all over if we just tested. 
lunacy. Lunacy. These are the kind of numbers you see in the Polygon in Russia. I guess it's not Russia anymore, but you know what I mean. All of the radiation present in the oceans today, fish remains that only between 1 and 2% of it originated from humans, and it's a tiny amount. The trouble is what kind of radiation? What kind of radiation? I'm getting radiated from these stage uh, studio lights that I have up again. I'm not being hit, God willing, with plutonium! So, that's another blanket lie. And, and the whole article goes on. I'm not even going to give them any more time. But these are the things that you need to watch out for. And to go back to the way I really opened the show, in, in part one, before the tripod dumped on me, this is why I need help getting these things out. Because I'm one of the few people that are addressing these things. And I have been for a very long time. A couple more to get here, too. Um, <coughs> this is from scmp.com. Backlash to Japan's Fukushima wastewater plan quietens as South Korea and China assess the real cost. Now, it's interesting here. When is the last time that, you know, Rachel Maddow and Donald Trump agreed on something? When is the last time that the Christian right agreed with the Church of Satan? Sam, what the hell are you talking about? Let me read you that headline again there, Sparky. Backlash to Japan's Fukushima wastewater plans quietens as South Korea, China assess the real cost. That should say Backlash as a supposedly free nation and a respecter of liberty dump Fukushima wastewater. The plan to do so is quieted by South Korea, who is also West-loving and liberty-loving and freedom-loving, along with China, which should read barbaric regime, who up until recently was cutting women's babies out of their wombs with butter knives if they dared to have more than one kid, agree that this dumping of water in Fukushima is an awful idea. This is like Anton LaVey doing tap dances with Billy Graham. It doesn't happen very often. But again, you have to remember where these nations come from. See, prior to Japan supporting Nazis, they have a long history of just barbaric fights with China. South Korea, of course, has a history of, within the last 100 years or so tied to the lunatic in North Korea. They agree on this, friends. And it's actually Japan who's in the wrong. China is actually, when's the last time the correct views ever agreed with the leader of China? Way to go, Winnie the Pooh. After rebuking Japan last week over its plan to discharge contaminated Wuta from the wrecked of Fukushima nuclear plant into the ocean and threatening to petition an international court, South Korea's foreign minister, Chung Yu Young, seemed to strike a more conciliatory tone in recent days. Amid protests by students, fishermen, and politicians, Chung said Seoul just wanted transparency and proof from Japan that the 1.2 million tons of water are safe to be released into the ocean. Now, to, to take a moment to, to really let that sink in for a moment. It's like Japan, South Korea sort of has their hand out here to maybe allow this to happen, maybe quiet it down, if they get this supposed proof. My guess on that, and this is the correct view, so you're probably pretty safe to go with it. First of all, Asian countries uh, are known to be polite, even when they're about to cut your throat. You know, they'll, they'll give you a, a, a sake before you're gone, um, and ask you what flavor you like. Plum. 
The other one is they know that Japan does not want to give discovery on this. In other words, Japan does not wish to prove this because that proof doesn't freaking exist. And that, friends, oh, I forgot the dum -dee music. As I remind you, I'm going to call it up here, the last story of the day. As I do so, let me remind you that you can donate at the correct views at hotmail.com through pay. <laughs> cap of the month. I got basically it's just really been intense trying to do all of this myself and then after the loss of uh, the humongous response that my videos on Facebook were getting I need some assistance. All right guys the last one tragic choices at Fukushima Daiichi power plant. Now <clears throat> I'm not giving the dump cap uh, the dumpty of the day to Elsa I guess quite here uh, the kind doctor but the dum this further goes on, I should say, uh, the dum is given to Engadget, who I opened it up for. This is what we are looking at here. And you can get the whole abstract from the ASCE library. Yeah, this, this is what the doctor wrote. Again, Dr. Elsa uh, Gisquet. 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 I don't know. In high-risk industries, <clears throat> the development of reliable safety systems. This is the abstract has made it easy to forget that operators may one day be confronted with dramatic, life-threatening situations. This article examines one such catastrophe, the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. It will, she writes, shed light on the mechanisms at work in operators' attempts to mitigate the disaster, even as they knew they would be exposed to a radioactive environment. Using available literature and official reports, it goes on, it will show how the decision process used by workers to make tragic choices involving self-sacrifice, unfolded within three orders of determination, institutional, organizational, and filled. And uh, they talk about the, the, the different uh, elements that went into this, including basically what's going to be the, the self-sacrifice of themselves. Now... It's easy to say that and say, yeah, that, that's, that's bad. Bullshit. Let, that, let this sink in for a moment. Really, really let it sink in for a moment. Every day you're in pain. When you eat something, your body may or may not digest it. They try to check you for what's wrong. They can't tell. Maybe you develop gastrointestinal issues. Maybe you have heart trouble, even when, you know, otherwise your heart would have been healthy or at least aged normally, you know, as much as it can in a Whopper society. But uh, not for you. It gets much worse. Headaches all the time. Dizziness. Uh, you give birth. You don't know what's going to be wrong with the child. These kinds of sacrifices is what they're talking about. And again, not everybody is somebody that can be erased with a big eraser and no one will ever miss you. That might be true of me. It remains to be seen. It seems like it is. But it's not true of all. So, these are the kinds of sacrifices which were made by the Fukushima 50, which was way more than 50, but these were the sacrifices that came to them. And we saw it at wind scale. We saw it at uh, the bomb testings. We saw it at the Polygon. We saw it in uh, Three Mile Island. We saw it certainly in Chernobyl. And on and on and on. And if society's ever going to wake up from this and to what is going on, not the fake wokeness we have now where we're told that men could have periods, but a real awakening to when we can look at things around us and realize that what we are being told is anything but the truth. And we have very little say over what these plants do. Well, then maybe somebody will say, hey, that sounds a lot like what I was thinking about COVID. We have very little say over who gets vaccinated. They're trying to force it. Oh, you know what? We have very little say over what we can report on. 
Oh, they'll shut your Facebook page down. It's not a conspiracy theory to say that many of these things are being used against us because they all need to be used in tandem like a wheel to roll over us. And if that is something which you agree upon, then the best way to stop it is to expose it. And I'm out here trying to do so. If you would like to help me do that, <coughs> please donate at the correct use of hotmail.com through PayPal. But also, as I said at the beginning of the show, help me find a way to get the show back out to the people who were following it. And now, of course, the page is gone. Thank you, friends. Good night. God bless.